Hey there Paper Geeks and Glitter Nerds, it's Senna and this week is a bit different than usual. This is one of those tedious tasks that I've been avoiding for years because I figured I don't need that. I don't need to know what every single color I own looks on paper. But I guess I did because uh, during this process I found out that there were actually some colors I never used and they were actually pretty nice but I thought they were just the same as the other color I had. So why would I use that one when the other one is known and true. So here you see me cutting Bristol smooth paper. This is for my swatches for my distress inks. Now I calculated a swatch based on the size of the paper in the pad and since that one's in inches my uh, little cards here are in inches too. Normally I work in centimeters but when well something about lemons and, uh, and lemonade I think. Um, uh, here I make a mistake. I should have made the hole in the tag as the first thing, not the ink blending, but I'll correct it. It'll be like a few swatches and then uh, I'll correct myself. Now my camera is moving and I have no clue why. I'm trying out a new camera, new background. I moved the, the bracket a bit uh, where the camera's positions and I have no idea how it's floating. You see, my camera is mounted to the wall and I'm pretty damn sure my wall ain't moving. So, I have no clue why this is happening. I'm trying to correct whatever it is. This is, I don't know what it is, it's kind of hard. So, if you get seasick, I'm very, very sorry, but I, I can't undo this um, floating thing that's happening. <coughs> well, back to the swatch. I wanted a place where I could see the color as it was, you know, when you ink blend it, that's what I normally use this for, and I wanted one to see the contrast uh, from the paper. That's why I'm using this no-name stencil. Uh, I bought it, I think, in Tristan Green, but I'm uncertain whether or not it was that or Tiger of Copenhagen. It was an A4 sheet with the four different patterns, and I cut them apart. You'll see the other three later um, when I do the swatches for all my stencils. But anywho, I wanted some definition between the two, and uh, I think this uh, constellation, can you call it that, uh, was perfect. So Now this is a long video and a lot of this is sped up insanely, so I hope you won't get too bored. But back to uh, this whole project, you know when I started crafting years ago I figured I can keep track of everything. I, I will know what I own and I will know what is best. And then lately I've seen a lot of people do color matching between their products and I just knew th I couldn't put this off anymore. I have too much stuff to keep it in my head. <laughs> so and I know this isn't the most exciting um, video for some. Other people love watching things being done like this, you know, um, conveyor belt method, assembly line style if you prefer. Uh, and you'll see quite a bit of the back of my head. I try to cut it out as much as possible, but apparently I have a very big head. And um, yeah. that would be the dog think he saw something. He's losing his eyesight. So this is very nice. He's already death. And I don't own an, uh, any hole punch at the moment so I'm using this very big one. And I use the paper to try and figure out where the hole will end up if I use it. There's this little tab on the side to keep the paper straight. Um, later I'm gonna make some round ones. I don't think I filmed that part. No, I didn't. Um, but I just make it made a jig uh, of a piece of cardstock where I drew in where the swatch was going to be placed and then I could uh, get the hole where I wanted it. Um, but it worked out. It's a bit crooked and stuff, but well, who cares? Well, I kind of do, but you get the point. 
Well, uh, this is a long video and I don't want to just bore you with me coloring things and uh, then the music like I normally do with the coloring. So I'm gonna try and talk you f or at least talk through everything, uh, even though I'm very bad at that part, in my own opinion that is. But uh, I have sped this up to 12 times the, the speed, normal speed, and um, hopefully that will get us through a bit fast. I have cut out some of the swatches, I promise you, you won't see me do every single one. I think there was 24 colors or something like that. And um, it took like two days because of my back. And luckily for me, on the second day, I uh, went out shopping and I finally found gloves. It's magical. I have missed having gloves in my kitchen. I, I hate touching meat and uh, getting things under my nails. I know there's a lot of bacteria under the fingernails. So for my peace of mind, I prefer to wear gloves whenever handling uh, meat, especially meat. Um, or if I have to bake something and put my hands in it, I, I put on gloves. But gloves for this is also magical because the ink sticks to... See, here they are, the gloves. This is the next day and I am so happy because I can actually get the ink off my fingers. Because I was uh, a bit... <coughs> I did contaminate a few swatches, unfortunately. Um, because I couldn't get the ink off my... Oh, see, there, that's my baby. He uh, was keeping me company. Very sweet dog. Um, also very annoying, like you just heard. Um, I just figured, um, well, show a bit of personality. So that was my dog. It's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, if you didn't know. Um, but yeah, the gloves, they're, they're brilliant. Especially when you are going through this many colors. Um, and this one is the last one. And then I'm going to show you how I rearrange my colors. I have them in a drawer next to me and I can fit four and then I keep the little uh, finger daubers next to them um, and then the rows just go up or down depending on which way you start um, but here you see them I'm gonna go a bit off screen I didn't notice again the new camera I haven't quite gotten the perfect solution for seeing what I'm doing um, yet I'm working on it but uh, a lot of people want a lot of money for that kind of app since I am I'm crossing over I have always been a Mac person or at least the last 10 years or so if it's not 15 but lately my iPhone has been giving me trouble you've seen the color problems I've had and I have problems getting the files out of the phone so now I've borrowed my boyfriend's old phone which is a uh, an Android phone and well the, the filming is great I can say that much, but um, yeah, I'm still getting used to it. Finding out how to get the, the picture of that phone on my computer, which is in front of me, so I can see it. Since the phone is mounting s mounted so high over my table, I can't actually see the screen. Oh, and this is my system for keeping one dauber for every color. I write the initials of every color on it. I don't think there is any doubles within the same color family. I have a quite a few SS's like uh, Stormy Sky, Scattered Straw, Spun Sugar, uh, but they're all different. I can see the difference between them. So the initials are enough for me at least. I just put them on here with some scotch tape. It works quite nicely. Uh, there were a few I hadn't actually used finger daubers with, but now I just I decided everything has to get marked, and now I am ready to organize my drawer. That's why I emptied it. So, but I'm I'm getting up there with the colors. I still haven't got any oxides. I am thinking about branching out, but that would require money, and that's something I don't have a lot of at the moment, unfortunately. Um, well, that's life, isn't it? I am hoping to get back to working, but uh, I'm in a a program at a hospital at the moment trying to figure out if there's anything medical they can do to help me with my back, since 
all normal solutions have been uh, tried. So I'm trying some medication that as a side effect helps with pain. And I'm gonna have to try a lot of mental things to try and manage the pain, I guess. The blues were actually the hardest to organize. I didn't expect them to be, but they were. But I ended up with uh, something that I think is usable. Now they're going back in the drawer. I already put the uh, sponge daubers in while I was working. I put the rest of the tags I'd made on the back of the swatches so I can make more whenever I get new colors. And now on to first embossing folders. And this, I cut out the part where I actually emboss it because you can't see me. My big shot is right to the to the side of my workstation. But I have to get up to use it nowadays because it it's, there's so much pain if I try to sit and do it. These, uh, the first embossing folder you saw, I don't know the brand. This one, I don't know the brand, but the one in between is from Doris. And after looking it up online, it is actually not what I thought it was. I thought it was this um, pillow stitching thing, but apparently it's chicken wire. No clue why I uh, I figured it was uh, that kind of pet. But if I can be fooled, anyone who sees my card will be fooled. And this is an embossing folder that also contains a uh, die to cut out a brick wall. It's very nice. I uh, use it quite often. This one I don't use too often. It was with my Big Shot. I have the big one, the A4 size. And this, I, I didn't have a name for it, but it's a C6 um, embossing folder. Um, I don't know if you saw, but the paper is 220 grams from uh, Sustana Green, um, meaning the sister's green, I think you'd say in English. Um, these are homemade background stamps. I often forget I have them, so hopefully this will help me to remember. Uh, I made these out of foam, and you see I made a mistake there, um, unfortunately. But then I decided since this can actually go either way, maybe I should stamp the other side in the other direction so I could remember that it's uh, quite versatile. It's a good size for uh, standard um, card panels in the metric system. And this one I hadn't even used yet, so... But uh, yeah, you can uh, actually do your own background stamps if you want. The foam is not the best for stamping, of course, but it gives a distressed look that I actually like. I hope, I really hope I get to use it in the future. This one I was uncertain about. Um, since all of these um, circles have been die cut from the foam, I was uncertain whether or not um, they would stamp good. It was okay. Um, it was mostly the outside. Some of them had color on the inside. So it, it's a question of whether or not I'm going to use it or I should just throw it out. But I'm trying it out and maybe in a few months I'll go through my stash and think, okay, I never used them. Maybe they should go up. So. And now on to all my stencils. Now, I did wonder if I should have also embossed with these stencils, because you can actually do that. Maybe not this one. I, I missed the first stencil, by the way. The camera... It screwed me over, to say the least. Um, it has some kind of kink about when I turn it on to color... Uh, to, to record. The camera doesn't color. I color. The camera records. Um, it sometimes gets this warning and then shuts off. The co uh, and I can't see it from where I'm sitting, so I have that problem. These are very flimsy, I might not be able to um, to use them for embossing. But the rest of the the um, stencils are quite sturdy and should be quite usable for embossing. But I didn't want to use even... I know this sounds awful. I didn't want to use even more paper on these, but I should have. I I'm gonna in the future. I'm just running a bit low on white paper at the moment. So... These two were with the, the bubble one you saw earlier. Here it is. Um, and then after that 
comes the fourth from this sheet that I bought a long time ago. They're extremely deep. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this with a normal uh, foam brush. That's also why I opted for the... Uh, well, it's, it's a shaving brush, actually. Because I know it works great with stencils, no matter the depth. But if I use embossing paste with these very thick stencils, it kind of looks weird. Uh, so I have to remember that. It's not a problem. Um, yeah. Do you use stencils? I, I I forget I have them, but I actually do like all the things you can do with them. Um, and this one I love because I can actually extend it. I used this for a house for Christmas. Um, and it looked very nice. Very, very nice. Maybe I should find a picture. Did I put a picture? I put a, put a picture on Instagram actually of these houses I made last Christmas. Um, they're very big so I needed a pattern I could continue. Um, this stencil is actually um, <laughs> it's for cakes. I bought two because I was getting into paper crafting and I was already in cake crafting so I figured I could use it for this. I own two Tim Holtz stencils, and I own the big ones, and I still find them too small. I hate that they're so hard to uh, make continuous. This one especially, because I really love this pattern, but it's hard to use when you need it for a bigger surface than the stencil is actually for, because I hate the seams that you get when you move the stencil. But that was actually all the stencils, and here are all the swatches I made over a about a week. Um, so, the uh, stencils, the embossing folders, the background stamps, then here are the distress inks. And this is my Nouveau Drops, my Stickles and Liquid Pearls. Then they're both on, the, uh, on a black and a white piece of card. I didn't film this one, I did it sitting on my couch one evening, so didn't film that one. These from Lawn Fawn I already had. I just cut them apart and put them on a ring. They were originally on an A4 sheet of paper. And on the back side I have my mementos. I stamped this free scoops image and I like it because they're both solid and fine lines so I can really see how to use the color. And this was all the swatches for this time being. I hope you enjoyed this, got something out of it, and I hope you'll be having a good day, evening or night. Till next week.